what I want to do is get you comfortable with translations and trigonometry. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. I want to go back in time a little bit. What is, here's your unit circle. And up here, if I look up here, here's theta. Here's negative theta. We're going to do this one first. X, Y, what will this point be? X negative. X negative Y. So if we call this X, if the radius is 1, which we usually did, the unit circle, this would be the cosine of theta comma the sine of theta. Okay? Now, if we call this the cosine of negative theta, and this the sine of negative theta, right? What do you notice is true about the cosine of negative theta and the cosine of theta? They're the same. So some people will just ignore that minus sign in there. But all you're saying is if you put your arms out like this, you go up, you go down, you're still going x direction the same. Do you remember that? So what's true of the uh, sine of negative theta? Careful. Yeah, because this is negative, it's going to be the opposite of this sine theta. So that's a substitution that we're going to make quite a bit. Let's do one more. And this one I think is super useful, but we don't talk about it a lot. It's kind of pushed under the rug. It's that forgotten, forgotten. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to call this theta, and then this one up here is going to be, ooh, do I want that? Yeah, that's theta. So this is theta, and this is theta. We're going to call this cosine theta, sine theta. Now, let's say that this is 30 degrees. Remember when this was a square to 32, and this was 1 half? Let's say if this were 30. What would it be at 60, do you remember? one half squared of three over two. And what happened to those coordinates then? They switched sine of theta and um, uh, cosine of theta. But actually what this is, is it isn't this, yeah, those are, those are true. What we could do is we could say that this is pi over two minus theta, right? So we can say that the cosine of pi over 2, which is starting here, back off theta, is going to be equal to what? Sine of theta. What's the angle of pi over 2? 90. So what are two angles that add up to 90 called? Complementary. Cosine is the complementary sign, right? Okay, it's from this idea. Sine of pi over 2 minus theta, you can see that up here is also what? Cosine. Okay, this is old honors pre-calculus stuff that you know from the past. But here's what I wanted to show you because we're going to run into it today. But uh, the uh, novice would miss. So that's the cosine of theta minus pi over 2, and that's the sine of theta minus pi over 2. 50, uh, 30 seconds, discuss. All right, the hint time, hint time, cosine of the opposite of pi over 2 minus theta. See what I did there? And this is going to be the sine of the opposite of pi over 2 minus theta. So, what will this, what will this thing be? It's just the sine of theta. Why is it just the sine of theta? Cosine of minus theta is negative. It's the same, right? So what will happen is this is the, what we could do is we could say this is the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. It's the same thing, which is that. But what's this the same as? Negative the sine of pi over 2 minus theta, right? And 
And so that's going to be what? A negative cosine of theta. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, just wanted to give you that heads up because I think I think that's a little confusing for people. Um, Looking at it this way, let's say theta is over here. This is theta. If you back off pi, what quadrant shift do you do? How many? You go one quadrant shift, and the y is still going to be positive. But what happens to the x? Flips. Now let's do a different one. Now let's go to... Oops. I like that red. Let's go to this one. This is theta. Now... Okay, you can go any amount you want, right? Let's say we're all the way to third. Now, when we back out 90 degrees, we change, right? And so that that is going to change one of those signs. Both of these are going to be negative in the x, and the other and the y is going to change, right? The cosine stays the same, but the sign switches. All right, so I thought that might be helpful to start with before we get into all this fun stuff. All right, now, consider the traditional method. This is not the way I want you to think about it, but I love this. This is like a, my method yesterday. It makes more sense this way, uh, but we use the other one more. Uh, we're going to start with P of X, Y, and we're going to go to the new X prime, Y prime. So they're saying this is phi going up to here, and then we're going another, marching a little further, theta. Okay? So if we want this new point, this new point is going to be the cosine of the two of these, theta plus phi, and comma sine of theta plus phi. That's the new point. So this is my x prime. This is my y prime. You're good with that? Okay. Now, so x prime is cosine phi plus theta. Y prime is sine phi plus theta. Uh, now, someone mentioned coco cc. Now we'll do coco cc. Cosine phi, uh, cosine theta minus sine phi, sine theta. And then this one, seco cosi, sine phi, cosine theta, plus cosine the phi, sine theta. And then we got to go back a little bit. Let's take this triangle. This is uh, x, this is y, right? And this was phi, and this was 1 because we have a unit circle here. What's the cosine of phi equal to? X, what's the sine of phi equal to? Y, Be therefore, we can replace this guy with X and this guy with Y. This guy with Y, this guy with X. And so what we end up with is X prime is X cosine theta plus y sine theta, and then y prime is x sine theta plus y cosine theta, or x prime y prime is what times x what as a matrix? Minus sine theta and sine theta cosine theta. This is the translation uh, standard matrix for rotating counterclockwise about theta. So if you knew the angle, you can translate that point. Boom. Just like that. Isn't that something? And we, we are interested in what the uh, determinant is. If it's zero, we can't use this. But what's cosine times cosine? What's what minus sine times minus sine? So that is a, a determinant of one. I like that. Turn to your neighbor and explain. Yeah. So th 
this alternative method is the method we will use to do all of the rest of these proofs. This is the way, that was a nice intuitive way, this is a better way for applying all the others. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take, remember when we had uh, 5, 3, that was the same as what times 5 plus what times 3. One zero zero one. These have names. This was E1 and this was E2. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate those elementary vectors. We're going to rotate the one zero over. Then we're going to rotate the zero one like that. We're going to do both of those. Put them together. What does that spell? The rotated matrix. <laughs> <laughs> For those out in computer life, it's homecoming week, so we're trying to mix our metaphors. Okay, so now we have, so what you're going to do is you're going to do the rotation, T10, then, this is then, T01. So, if you take this point, cosine theta, sine theta, here's theta. If you rotate this one, theta, this is going to be cosine theta, sine theta. Here it is cosine theta, sine theta. Then go vertical, and we're going to rotate this. Now, what happens when this is 90 degrees? They switch, and the x is negative, correct? So, therefore, now, for this one, it's going to be negative sine theta, cosine theta. Done. Wait, what? What just happened? That is what I've heard before. And the reason I like to prove the other one first is because when I get this, it seems like a lot of hocus pocus. But uh, here's what happened. We started, it's a, it's, it's a uh, unit circle, and this is x, y, cosine theta, sine theta. You all see with that? Yes, sir. Now, the elementary matrix 1, 0, and 0, 1 are what angle between them? 90. 90. So if I rotate this, well, that would be 90 degrees from here. So if these two are 90 apart, we switch those coordinates and then quadrant to the first one's negative. Do you agree with that? Yep. Do you agree that this is uh, vector 1, 0, and this is vector 0, 1? Yep. So therefore, the translation here, x, y, here's an x, here's a y, and then this one, X, Y, if you want to call it that. We'll just put those exactly in the same place as what we had before. So this is our anti-clockwise rotation about the origin through an angle zero, or theta. Anti, yeah. Now you can go clockwise, what will happen to theta? Instead of going this way, pi over 2, you can go the other way, pi over 2. You say negative theta, and then those, those um, identities will kick in. Cosine of negative pi over 2 is the same as cosine of pi over 2. Stuff like that. What? Okay. All right, that was the easy one. Now we're going to this is a good one. Now we're going to reflect this about a line. So we're, we're tired of 0, 0. We want to take any other line. So the equation of a line is y is equal to uh, slope times x. If it goes through the origin, y equals mx. But m is the same as change in y over change in x, which is the what? Slope, which is also on, in a unit circle, it's the what? Sine over cosine, change of y over change of x is the tangent. So that's why you have this about line y equal tangent alpha times x. Or you can also say y equal to m times x. Now, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to, I guess they were subscripts. We're going to rotate uh, the elementary matrix, or elementary vector E1. We're going to take 1, 0, and we're going to move it about the line. So this one goes up to here. How many alphas did it move? Two around that line. Because this, this line has an alpha angle to the origin, so to do twice that, it's going to be two alpha. 
So do you agree that this would just be cosine 2 alpha sine 2 alpha? Yeah, that one went great. Now what we have to do is take the 0, 1. And this one's a little nastier. This one has to flip over the line. And you've got to think about what this is first. This is alpha here. And this is going to be pi over 2 minus alpha. Right? That's what this angle is. So this thing, this angle from here flipping down to there is going to be what? Wouldn't it be two of these? They, they didn't get that though. They want something, oh, I know what they did. They, they, they don't want to, they want this in terms of theta. So here's, here's alpha and here's theta. Theta goes from the origin down here. And uh, theta, theta plus alpha equals this. Theta plus alpha equals pi over 2 minus alpha. So if we subtract alpha, you're going to get pi over 2 minus how many alphas? Two alphas. So that's that's what theta is. We're trying to we're trying to reflect this in terms of theta. So what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, this is going to be this new place. This new place is going to be the cosine of two alpha minus pi over two. We got a ways to go here though first, don't we? So let's do this. I'm going to um, cosine of 2 alpha minus pi over 2. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, how'd they move that that quick? <laughs> cosine of, did they take a 2 out? No. Theta 2 alpha. I did that on purpose. So this is the cosine of negative 2 alpha minus pi over 2. And this is the sign of negative uh, uh, pi. <laughs> uh, switch it. Pi over 2 minus 2 alpha. Pi over 2 minus 2 alpha. What I did is I turned these around and took the minus sign out. Turn them around, took the minus sign out. Now, what's the cosine of minus anything? The cosine of pi over 2 minus 2 alpha. And this thing is the opposite of the sign, pi over 2 minus 2 alpha. Okay, And we're saying that pi over 2 minus 2 alpha is going to be what? The sign of 2 alpha. And this will be the opposite of the cosine of 2 alpha. And you have to set it down. All right. So then what you want to do is, are we okay with these steps or not? This is what I talked about at the beginning here, is you reverse, you, whenever you reverse, you pull out a minus sign, and then if you have the cosine of pi over 2 minus anything, we'll call it Connor, you're going to get the sine of Connor. Oh, right? Yeah. And if you have the sine of pi over 2 minus uh, Berlin, then it would just be the cosine of Berlin. So that's the reason that one's negative and one isn't is because this sign becomes the minus sign. All right, so there's that. This is for 0, 1. Boy, hard earned. And this one here is for 1, 0. When you put those together, you get cosine 2 alpha, sine 2 alpha. And then you get sine 2 alpha, negative cosine 2 alpha. There you go. Now, what is that determinant? It's going to be negative cosine squared 
minus sine squared 2 alpha. What's negative cosine squared minus sine squared? Cosine squared minus sine squared. That, because you can pull out a negative sign, and won't that just be negative 1? So that's your determinant for that. And that, those are the two rotations that you have. So, what is the point of all this? The point of all this is, is that let's say we had to do a clockwise rotation through 2 pi over 3. And clockwise would mean you're going instead of 2 pi over 3, what's theta? Negative 2 pi over 3. But you're excellent with cosine negative theta and sine negative theta. This is no problem. So what I would do is I would find the cosine of this first and the sine of it second and just plug into that. So the cosine of uh, negative 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. The sine is negative square root of 3 over 2. A little review of the old unit circle. So then what you would do then is you would say, okay, the cosine of theta, negative, where did this come from? That's the rotation about theta formula that you can use. And so you just plug that, those values in and done. Yes. Uh, but you won't be able to use it. I don't think it, I don't think it's on the further math packet. But you can use it for my tests. But you can't use it for that. Right, one last thing. If we're reflecting about the line y equal 3x, goes through the origin, slope is 3x. The, the slope is 3, so we kind of go back here and we say, oh, okay, cosine 2 alpha and sine 2 alpha are in this uh, rotation about a line formula. That's, you're going you're gonna to have that. I'll give you that on one of my tests. And so then what you do is you go, oh, I remember cosine 2 alpha, that was this one. 1 minus 3 squared over 1 plus 3 squared. And then when you go to uh, sine 2 alpha, you go here and you go, oh, that's 2 times 3 over 1 plus 3 squared. And you just plug those in and then you're done. That's the translated point. This is magical compared to what we did with vectors last year. Way, 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 way easier. Um, I'm going to let you read this one. Uh, it's not that tough. This is easy, but I just ran out of time. For tomorrow, we're going to do 1AB. Uh, 1CB EF. So that's 6. And just 2AB. We'll work with those. Just everything up to 2AB. So 1A through F and 2AB.